Unmuted, unmute, unmute. Uh, oh, my, gosh. my <laughs> computer is a little slow. Yes, I'm here. Um, I was just telling the team I jumped on this this live stream just a couple of minutes ago um, because I have a chaotic day behind me, but it's almost over. And I'm so glad to spend it with all my toolkit friends and the friends in the chat on this lovely channel and live stream. So welcome, everyone, for the May .NET Maui Community Toolkit live stream stand up. Um, that we're going to talk about. Unfortunately, we have to do it without Kim today. I think he had some family stuff to take care of. Um, so, of course, that happens. No worries about that. But luckily, we have all of our other friends. Brandon, how are you doing? Good, good. Another sunny, beautiful day in California. Perfect. I'm not jealous anymore. <laughs> it's sunny here as well. It's sunny here as well. See, I got my T-shirt on. Everything is well in the world. Uh, the sun is coming out here, so doing fine. It's just, this is the perfect time. Like, it's not heated up in my attic just yet, so I'm happy right now with the good weather. Um, but very soon, it will heat up here. It will be, I can't be here, so then it will be too hot, and I will start complaining about it being too hot. That's how it works. That's how it works. I'm never, um, and this is, this is I don't know how, how it is in the rest of the world, but the Dutch people, we're never happy about the weather. Too cold, too rainy, <laughs> too warm. There's always something. Sean, how is that in the UK? You just always have rain, right? Pretty much, although we've had sun today as well. Check out the shirt. Good. Oh, yeah. I can see it. So, but yeah, I think the British people are very similar to the Dutch in terms of uh, <laughs> never being satisfied with the weather. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's something for everywhere. Everything okay, Sean? Um, did we Everything talk about really it last time? Was, she, was your book out by then? Did you have like the physical one then? No, I, I, I wasn't out there now. Up. I was on holiday. Oh, that's right. Um, you were on but, holiday. Uh, Yes, it is. Look, where is it? <gasps> yes. Oh, there it is. It's an actual one. Yes. It is. He did it. He did it. So go out, buy it. It's going to be amazing. Um, so Sean has all the time in the world again because his book is finished. Uh, <laughs> that's how it works. You get your life back. Um, well done, Sean. Well done. I'm I'm still waiting for my physical copy. I read it because I was the technical reviewer for it. Uh, so I already read it, but I can't wait to have the physical copy to prove it as well. Um, Jay, it's early for you again. It's still dark again. outside. I can see that. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah. Uh, great, great. Uh, it's Children's Day over here in Korea today. Okay. So after this stand-up, I'll have the family gathering and things <laughs> oh that's really nice that's really so do you have the day off work then also yeah yeah it's the national holiday on children's day okay and you're getting up still for us this early wow you you never cease to work. <laughs> that's really great that's really great and uh, i hope before i forget that we end the stream i hope you will have a wonderful day with your family uh because that's very important um vlad how have you been yeah hello finally raining season is over and uh, spring has come so it's finally warm in ukraine yeah great we, we all waited for it <laughs> great 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 that's awesome um yeah we have some connection today vlad more than usual because uh your president was over here in the netherlands actually because on the 4th <laughs> of may it's not just star wars day uh, but here it's also uh, uh kind of independence day i guess would be the the, the translation we uh, we're liberated here for World War II on this day. So we always have like uh, today and tomorrow, there's there's some festivities as well um, to kind of like remember that. And and we had um, um, the president of Ukraine over to give a speech. And because, you know, that, that of course, is top of mind here as well. So um, we have a special to speech today. Him? I, he was very far away from me, but I, I, oh. I did watch his speech. <laughs> Maybe he flew over me. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, there's that. There's that. But let's talk to good stuff. I see a lot of people in the chat today, which is really great. George, hello. Um, Steve, Grady already has Sean's book, which is great. It's a good read. Well, there you have it. 10 out of 10, out of 10 would recommend. Um, so, yeah, we got all these people here, which is great. I saw another person earlier. Neo Matrix. I probably know his name, but I'm terrible with names. So sorry about that. We're gonna um, talk about his, let's talk shop. His proposal later, too. <laughs> oh, there, well, there we have it. Um, so announcements. We released a new version of the Examine Community Toolkit. Yes, that's still there. 
um, we because we had a couple of bun, uh, bug fixes in there uh, that weren't released. We merged it, but it wasn't really released yet. And um, obviously, then you can't really use it, right? So um, I don't think there's anything really shocking in there, um, but definitely a bunch of good um, bug fixes to make your life easier and to let you know that we've not forgotten about our Xamarin projects as well. So we put that out there. Um, and if there's anything else that's bothering you, um, like I think we've mentioned it earlier, like the, the Xamarin part of the world is slowing down a little bit um, because you know we can't spend our time only in one place at once. Uh, the hot new thing is done at Maui where we still have a lot of ground to cover. Um, we still love Xamarin, but if there's something that you really need, um, it still is the community toolkit. So maybe help yourself out while you're helping others and consider opening a pull request for the thing that's um, bugging you. But we still put out a release whenever you need one. So there's that. Brandon is unmuting, so I'm, I'm doing a little pause to see if he's saying something, but he's not. So we're going to move on to Community Toolkit Maui 510, because that's another release with the Lazy View keyboard extension and a bunch of bug fixes as well. So the two main things here, Lazy View um, is an amazing thing that we brought over from the Xamarin Community Toolkit. I think Pedro uh, actually implemented it first uh, and allows you to kind of like delay the loading of a certain view. Um, so a common scenario is that you have a tab page and all the pages in there just start loading whenever your application loads, uh, which can have a big impact on the startup uh, of your application. So put the lazy view in there and you can have more control over when that view is actually loaded. Um, so the startup time of your app will be much better. And you can, of course, apply that to all the things where you want to apply some lazy loading. Um, Pedro did it first, then who's not here, brought it over to the .NET MAUI toolkit, and now it's released so that you can use it in your .NET MAUI apps. Um, also, keyboard extensions, which is a little special thing, uh, which, which really highlights the, the synergy that we got going on with the .NET MAUI team and the .NET MAUI community toolkit. Um, this is something, I think I've talked about it on an earlier stand-up with the keyboard stuff, uh, that we hacked around it for Xamarin Forms, and now suddenly we are removing those hacks for .NET MAUI, and everyone is like, oh, the keyboard is not behaving correctly. And then I'm talking about the soft keyboard on your screen, right? Um, while it actually is behaving correctly now, um, but it, it's a uh, change in behavior, right? So people um, are, well, maybe not even happy about it. They're at least surprised by it. Um, and to give you, again, more control over how the keyboard behaves, um, you can detect if it's now shown, you can hide it, you can show it whenever you like with a couple of events. Um, and this is something that will be uh, in the .NET MAUI uh, box, right? So it will be in .NET MAUI itself, where you would expect it. Um, but um, to overcome that gap, because that's going to be in .NET 8, which is released November 2023, so that's still a couple of months, and to also let you uh, use this already in .NET 7. But yeah, we're on .NET 7 for the, the community toolkit now. We've implemented in the uh, toolkit package right now so that you can use it today in your .NET Maui app. So that's really great. Um, I see some chatter. That's what threw me off here. Uh, how much longer is Xamarin supported? And Brandon says, yes, Xamarin ends in less than a year now, which is true because today is May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Um, and the support for Xamarin Forms and all the other Xamarin things, by the way, stops May 1st, 2024. So it's less than a year. The clock is ticking. You need to get going with that .NET MAUI app. I think... And it's time. We need a jingle for this. For our Jay Tyson five minutes. I don't know, something like that. Jay, um, for, for the last stand-up, we, we decided that we want to have some dedicated Tyson time. The last time you talked about what Tyson is, how it came to be, what it can do for you. Um, and then I think for this month, you have a little other thing for us. Um, so what are you going to teach us about Tyson this time? Okay. Let, let me share the, my screen this time so Brandon can Take some rest. All right. Uh, here comes the second time of five minutes of Tizen. Uh, on the last stand up, uh, I talked about what is Tizen, a little bit of history, and what things you can do with it. So today, following the suggestion from Gerard, uh, I'll talk about the development environment. Uh, there are two landing pages you can start with. One is the official Samsung developers, the developer.samsung.com. The link is there. You can just search it on the Google. 
I recommend to go to the Titan.net under Develop menu. It has the official guide for you know installation, get started, resources, and more. And the other site is the Titan.net GitHub. It's the GitHub.com slash Samsung slash Titan.net. It includes the bits for Tizen Workload, and uh, this is where you can connect to the actual Tizen.net developers in Samsung, including me. It also has some casual getting started for Tizen.net and Tizen.net Workload, and more. So for developing Tizen.net, you need three things in your hands. Uh, well, first one is the Visual Studio 2022, which I think you all have it on your machine already and Visual Studio Tools for Tizen, which is the Visix extension. And lastly, the Tizen SDK that just comes follows if you install the Tizen Visix. So I mentioned the three things, but basically you can just think that you need Tizen extensions on your Visual Studio. So let's jump into the installing Visual Studio Tools for Tizen. Uh, I put the detailed guide for the install step here, but I guess most of you here are just are just so pro installing the extension, so I would briefly just go through it. So you know, you go to the manage extensions. So you can search Tizen on the search tab. Then you you will see the Visual Studio tools for Tizen on top. So just download it and install it, modify, it, close, and now you're done installing the extension. And after it's done installing the Titan extension, then you would have the Titan tab, Titan menu under the tools. And if you select one of the Titan tools here, uh, and if you don't have Titan SDK installed on your machine, then installer, Titan SDK installer would pop up. The pop-up would appear like just like this. So if you're done installing the Titan SDK, now you're almost there. Now you just need an emulator for Tizen. So if you click the select the Tizen package manager here, and this is where you that you can download the Tizen packages. So the mobile emulator is under the main SDK, and the TV SDK is under the extension SDK. My small tip here is to consider using the mobile emulator for developing developing your Maui app because TV provides the limited access of like using shell on the target or some limited logs for security reasons. So I, I prefer to use mobile emulator when I develop the applications. Uh, and I know there will be a bunch of the CLI lovers. So for those of you who love using CLI, screw all that I mentioned above, we have a script to install the Titan workload in the titan.net GitHub. So you can just use invoke web request to download the script and execute the script on the machine. Then uh, the script will find the .NET SDK or, on your machines and it will just install the latest Tizen workload that fits on your SDK, .NET SDK versions. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, and then if you, if you, after install, done installing the workload, if you need Tizen emulators or other tools, then you can install the Tizen based, baseline SDK, SDKs on the following link I mentioned here. So that's it for today for the Tizen environment. And for the next standup, I think I will share how to set the TV to the developer mode. It's not deja vu if you're here at the last standup. I apologize. The time's limited. It's just five minutes Tizen. So I couldn't just get there in time. So please don't be mad. For the ones who are mad, I put the link here so you can check it in a hat. And if you're good, then please wait for the next standup. Thank you. Oh, the cliffhanger. So good, Jay. So good. <laughs> um yeah this is this is lovely i've i've been playing with it i couldn't get it it was pretty easy to install it uh i do get from time to time because maybe you can maybe you can answer that like we're not going to debug my thing right here right now but um 
each time I open a project now with the, the thing installed, is it going to look for updates for the workload? Because I sometimes now oh, get a prompt for yes. like admin mode to launch a little power script, uh, PowerShell script. Mm -mm. Is that? Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. We, 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 the, I last, or oh, at the very bottom, I explained about installing the workload. But if you install the physics from the Visual Studio extension, it what it does is when it launches on when you when you launch the Visual Studio, then it on the background it tries to find if you have your Tidal workload installed or not, and then it tries to install if you don't have it. But we we the previous version had a problem that it checks every time, and then every time it checks, oh. it finds the you know privilege. Okay. Maybe some. Maybe I had a little bug there in the extension then in the, the version that I was having. Uh, oh, no, no. Actually, that was the bug on our side, so I fixed it. So right. if you okay. get the latest version, then it will only ask the first time, very first time, Perfect. when you first launch. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to try that tomorrow. Thank you so much, Jay, for right. doing this. And, and I'm looking forward to next month. Yeah, and this one question right. for me, does it support uh, macOS developers? Because you... Oh, uh, you yeah, it's a, it supports Windows. Win yeah, you suppose Windows and Mac, but not the M M1 and M2. So <laughs> that if you have M1 or M2 machine, it doesn't, well, well it supports, but doesn't support the emulator. So you don't have the full environment for the Mac or Mac Silicon. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Brandon, George you're asking you're about uh, Winget yeah. in the comments. <clears throat> Winget? I don't know. I don't have much experience of WinGet. I don't know what it is. So, <laughs> what what is the WinGet? I, I'll figure out for the next. Figure out till the next stand up. Yeah. So I don't know. Does it? I I, I know what WinGet is. I don't have much experience mm -hmm. with it. But does it? That does that also? This is a question to George. Like, does that also update Visual Studio extensions? I guess then, else you wouldn't be asking the question. Uh, so WinGet J is kind of like. Uh, do you know maybe Chocolati or what is the other uh, Brew or I don't know that kind of stuff. Kind of oh, like yeah, a, yeah. Uh, package manager, but for all mm -hmm. kinds of apps on your computer. So you can just have this oh, yeah, Winget yeah. script to install your whole Windows machine after reinstall, basically. And it will install Git and Visual Studio and all these things. Yeah, um, so basically, we provide a Titan workload through the Titan uh, Visual Studio extension. So, extension updates on the Visual Studio marketplace. And for the install script I mentioned earlier, is it updates. It updates on the GitHub, so if you get the latest script, then you can get the latest version of the Titan workload. So gotcha. that's not that not exactly the Winget updates like, but it's just if you like CLI, then right. this is how you can do it. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, then moving on to the proposals. Um, and I feel really bad because I know we talked about this last month uh, about the amazing full screen support for the media element. I've been lacking a little bit with uh, giving the whole toolkit a little bit of attention from the development side. Uh, so I'm, I'm lagging behind there a little bit. And I know Neo Matrix, um, Neo Matrix, how do I say it? I don't know. James. Does this person have a real name? James, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> has been pointing us to, hey, I think I got this problem cracked to do full screen controls for media element. You put your name behind this in the show notes as well, Brandon. We have the public show notes. Uh, I don't know if the link has been posted, else we'll do that so you can follow along. Um, Brandon, you put your name in that show notes. Is there anything that you <laughs> know about this? Have you been involved in this? No, not Did a ton. Yeah, I, so just to fill everybody in, um, as a team, we crawl through the issues, proposals, discussions um, before every standup, and we'll add a label, um, this needs discussion label to the things we want to talk about um, on the upcoming standup. So yeah, I put my name next to it because I added the label because <laughs> I saw, I think James just opened this up today. I think this is, oh yeah, 11 hours ago. So hot off the presses. There we go. Um, but I also just wanted to kick it over to you, Gerald, since you're the media, <laughs> yeah. the media element expert. So no, no, absolutely. I was just wondering if if there, uh, <laughs> if you, in my absence, had had looked at it. So uh, I think we mentioned it a couple of times before. Like the media element full screen stuff is crazy hard for whatever reason, um, and uh, there's a ton of scenarios that we need to take into account. Um, and James has 
probably a need for this media element to show up at full screen. So he has spent um, a, a good time uh, to actually figure out. And he says that he's been able to do it. Um, and I promised the last month that I was going to take a look at it. Uh, but then there was some time off, yada, yada. Um, but I really need to get back to this. So thank you so much, James, for opening this. Um, will allow better view. I think like the, the um, it, it, I'm just checking the chat for, because James is in here. Yes, I need it. And I have gone through and tested it. So there's that. Um, that's like the best use case, right? Um, 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 people who actually need it and, and they will test it also, at least for their scenario. Um, so I've been eager to, to try this out. Um, the main problematic platform is Android in this case, I think. Um, and I suspect that it's because how Android builds up their app that the full screen is not really a thing without um, you know, going into immersive mode and doing all kinds of other things. Uh, but I see a bunch of code here to, to hide some things also whenever you're using shell, because now in .NET Maui, you also have like the shell versus non-shell apps where you need to do some different things maybe. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of things going on here. I'm not gonna review your code on stream, but I definitely need to take a look because this is <laughs> something that a lot of people are waiting for. Um, I do think um, um, Android is 100% working, according to James, so that's amazing. Um, I do think there will be some discrepancy in how this works uh, between the platforms, because I know, I think on iOS, there is not really um, a way to toggle between full screen or not from uh, code, uh, from APIs. Um, you can only say like, hey, whenever the video starts playing, then you need to go to full screen. And whenever it stops playing, then you need to go um, out of full screen. I think that's the only option that you have on iOS. Uh, so it will behave a little bit differently between the platforms as well. Uh, but we're going to try to get it as close as possible for all the platforms um, and hopefully uh, make it work for um, everyone's use cases. So yeah. Um, that's the thing on, on full screen controls. Um, I promise I will put it on my to-do list right now before I forget again, um, that I will look at this um, at least before the next stand-up so I won't look like a fool. <laughs> there we have and that. Should we assign a champion? Gerald, do you want to champion this proposal? Yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, sign All me right. for it. Full screen. Oh, let's see. Proposal. Do that live. There we go. Boom. So Gerald, move to champion, and then... We just talked about it, so now we're good. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, PRs, none, so that was easy. <laughs> we don't have any new PRs. Um, so we're going to move along to discussions with the pop-up service and hopefully get someone else to talk besides me, because even I'm tired of me hearing talking. So, um, Sean, the pop-up service, where are we with that? There is actually a draft PR for this, as I was just trying to show off what had been done so far and kind of playing around with things. Um, I've just been kind of experimenting with what might be possible and what might fit well. So there is, um, at the top there, there is a, a PR that provides uh, a pop-up service with, I think, a hidden behind an interface so we can inject it in by dependency injection. Uh, and then it gives you a way of registering pop-ups so the the view and the view model, and then it'll resolve based on different usages. So it's probably the bottom class, the bottom file that's the, the most useful in the PR. Um, and then Steve popped up on the proposal and questioned things like, oh, how do we pass parameters across? So things like how iQuery attributable, attributable works in Shell. So I played around with whether we could utilize that as well. Uh, at the moment, it, it does work. It lets you show a pop-up. It lets you pass in parameters to the view model uh, all through the, the current mechanism that we have in terms of showing pop-ups. I don't know how far to take it. I could keep going, but I think it's probably a good V1. So I'm hoping to tidy up. I'd start run some unit tests as well to see if I could break things. Uh, and then I was going to hopefully put, put the word to everyone today and see, because I don't think we... It hasn't been approved yet, so actually, this might be wasted effort. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is what we kind of agreed on, right? Like, there was a lot of pros and cons, doing it this way, doing it that way. So we kind of decided that the most clear thing to do was just to put it in code, 
um, see where that would take us, right? So that's what we have been doing with this. Um, yeah. Any opinions from anyone? Not that we have to vote or anything, but just, you know, whatever you're seeing, anything weird you have been looking at. Yeah, no, just happy to see this uh, continue on. I know we've, I think we started talking about this a few months ago. Um, and a lot of times if something comes up and then it kind of loses momentum, we forget about it or it kind of ends up getting dropped. So glad to see this one didn't. Yep, absolutely agree. Yeah, I've noticed the, there's, there's oh. quite a few pop-up related bugs as well. So I'm hoping as part of this little investigation, I'll try and get around to looking at what's going on with the, the bugs. Yep. Steve from the chat pitching in. <laughs> so far, looks good to me. Steve approves. Merge it, chip it. Let's do it. It's Friday tomorrow. So we can do it. We can do it. I guess, um, I, guess no, I have a question as to whether oh, this sure. makes sense, something, whether, whether something makes sense or not. Um, so at the moment, you can call show pop-up and it will resolve the pop-up for you and just present it. I've also, there is a method, one of the overloads there expects I query attributable. And that's making use of the interface that comes from shell and that pass that allows you to call that method apply query attributes and pass in a dictionary i don't know if that's the right interface to use or whether we want our own it's if you know what i mean in the fact that we are utilizing one of the mechanisms that come from, comes from shell which might be nice in the fact that it provides some level of consistency but it's not strictly shell so is it the right choice? Hmm. That's a really clever way of doing it. Um, yeah, because anybody familiar with Shell, uh, yeah, if, if you've never used I, I query attributable. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, not the greatest of names, is it? That's, that's one of the <laughs> But yeah, sure. basically, you know, with .NET MAUI, with Shell, we're moving into this world of every dependency injection, everything. Um, so in your, in your, view model or even in your view in your content page you might need to add in or pass in data from the previous page so a lot of times like the users click a submit button that takes them to another page and then you need to display that info on the next page and the way we do that in shell is by adding this i query attributable interface and then we can pass data between the two so uh, yeah, I think this is really clever, Sean, because anybody who's had to use this with Shell will already be familiar with it. Uh, and and then if you're not, you'll learn something new and then you'll be able to apply it with Shell as well. So yeah, as long as, I don't know, Gerald, if you know if there's any pitfalls or this is like the wrong way to, this wasn't what the interface was meant for or something crazy like that. Yeah, feel free to- No, I think, um, I think- yeah, I think like like you said, Brandon. I think this is this is a concept that if you're using Shell, you will know it. Um, so this is definitely something that works. I think the other way that you can do it is actually put an attribute on something, and it will kind of saturate itself. Oh, Sean is. You get laughing. that magic from Shell. I haven't worked out how we would do that with the pop-up side of things. If that makes sense. Uh, no, no, no. So gotcha. Because you, if you, a pop-up would live in Shell, doesn't that? Automatically apply to our pop up stuff as well. I have to do but you're thinking for that. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's not really utilizing Shell, it's just utilizing the interface that gotcha. you, you, you implement in order to gotcha. handle the, the. So I would think yeah. that people using Shell would use this way of doing things or use that attribute and it would work because it's living inside of Shell. Uh, if you're not using Shell, then that's probably by choice. Um, and you're not going to use any of this stuff anyway. But maybe I mean, you could yeah. still use this interface, and it would still work because we yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Shell magic. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's still not required to use shell, even if you, you can use this attribute independent from shell and just mm -hmm. pass any parameter. True. Even, yeah. if, even you, if you don't use it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, I guess that will. Oh. Yeah. In in in, in, in VVM. <laughs> you can use like methods initialize or whatever you want and pass parameter uh, and you do not require to use iQuery attributable at all so it's up to you what view model you use and just apply it mm -hmm. and pass parameters whatever methods you, you like yep 
uh yeah so if we want to really answer the question like is this what it's meant to be like for you know as much as there is one person that can determine that yes or no uh we should ask shane on the dot and Maui team um so i don't know if you're in contact with him directly but he would know he's kind of like the the one that's most involved with all the shell things so he will probably know best if this is something that um it was supposed to do or something that he might be surprised of like oh yeah that's super cool that you can also do this um but you know if it works it works i would say um so yeah so i do get the kind of the one question that i would have then is how do we move this forward um is there still stuff that you want to tinker on here sean or do you want uh a first review pass or how are we gonna go next um i guess i think in terms of implementation it's probably done other than actually any real unit testing so i'd be more than gotcha. happy to maybe promote this out of draft and see what people think or leave it in draft and people can apply their opinions cool. i wasn't entirely sure where i pop up where the pop-up service should live in terms of namespaces but um that's a good yeah. question that's <laughs> i feel like that's always one of our biggest discussions is like <laughs> Ah, shoot. What's our namespace supposed to be for this new feature? Names and where does it live? <laughs> uh, yeah, Sean, I'll, I'll add some suggestions here because uh, one thing I see, like T view model, I assume we should also have it inherit or implement iNotify property change, so probably both interfaces. Yep. And then, point. And then there's a way. Um, it's, you know how we, you, you kind of end up copy-pasting code from app to app? Um, I've got some code I've been copy pasting from app to app in my .NET MAUI apps that um, surfaces the iService provider because uh, if I remember correctly and if I'm remembering the right thing, um, this lives in the platform specific code um, and there's some code we can use so that we don't have to necessarily inject it here. But uh, okay. maybe maybe that works. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I have to often <laughs> review the PR in its entirety. But a service um, provider is not from .NET MAUI. It's from system dependency injection. So it's a set by, it's like a more global package. Yeah, it was something about like, after you've gone through your MAUI program.cs, if you ever want to access service provider mm -hmm. in, outside of that in a different class, um, the public APIs only existed on the platform specific codes. So you have to, like, oh, I'll take a look. I might be putting my foot in my mouth to <laughs> talk about something that's not right. But um, yeah, I'll throw in a suggestion here. And if it makes sense, cool. Um, if not, then yeah, we can push forward with this. Yeah, so maybe last question from me. Why do we need to inherit from I notify property changed here? Is it required for us or we can remove this constraint? We don't have to have it. Uh, I guess it was... The thought being around if you're going to have a view model, you're most likely going to want to bind, and therefore you're going to need to implement that interface, otherwise things aren't going to work. Um, we don't have to put that constraint in place. Yeah, I mean, it's what we use in you know those other extension methods we have, like um, the extension method, method for add transient. Um, allows you to pass in a, a view and a view model. In our case, the view is inheriting from page and the view models implementing I notify property change. I mean, I'll say I'll say this. I mean, I don't I don't disagree with Vlad, but if we move forward with this where we've kind of locked it down to it has yeah, to we implement. Yep, yeah, we anything. could always remove it in the future if if folks are um, you know questioning it, like why why the yeah. heck do I need to implement I notify property change if I'm not using it? I, but the other way would be a breaking change if we force people in the future to use it so always something to I, think about <laughs> i guess you don't have to use it do you if it's a one-time binding then actually you don't need it if you're not actually if the values aren't changing in the bind in the pop-up then there, yeah. there is a use case there where you wouldn't strictly <laughs> i would lean towards uh keeping it more restricted for the first release and then if we get feedback that people don't like it then just yeah, just remove it. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. On to the next one. Excellent. Yep. Um, sounds good. So then we have this one, cross-platform 
mechanism for setting the mouse cursor. I know my Mike because he's uh, working at Microsoft as well, and he's been in touch with a couple of customers who are heavy on the desktop side of things. So he, I think we also talked about his kind of proposal for the um, modal dialog within Windows. I don't know where we are at with that actually, uh, because that's something that he wanted. I think there's a lot of stuff going on there as well for like, should we do it? How should we do it? Um, and this is our next headbreaker, I guess, uh, for setting the mouse cursor, um, which is something, I don't know, is this, this is going to be totally random. Did you do this with like the themes in Windows and you could set it to, <laughs> I don't know, all kinds of crazy icons and then animated things even. And that was really cool when you were using like Windows 98 or ME, who remembers Windows ME. I did anyway, know, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you could also do it on websites. That was even cooler. You could, oh, well, anyway. Um, you can still do it, and you can also do it on a Mac uh, whenever you're hoovering over, I don't know, some kind of button or maybe a kind of fabricated link. Um, you want to change the cursor uh, to a little hand icon to make clear that it's something that you can click or do some other things, right? Um, so this is the um, um, proposal to open up something like that for down at Maui. Um, but just like the modal uh, stuff that, that I was just talking about, this is something very specific, obviously, to the desktop series, right? So mainly Windows, Mac OS. Um, is, there, is there anyone who knows a little about this already? I don't. No. <laughs> I haven't no, really right? had to worry about cursors in years, man. No. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, because kind of the thing that comes to mind for me, and I think he also talks about that, like t -t 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 limited on Mac Catalyst compared to AppKit. Uh, because, you know, if we step back a little bit, the way that .NET Maui is doing Mac OS apps now is through Mac Catalyst. And Mac Catalyst is basically your iOS app um, that can also be deployed to Mac OS, right? So here we are kind of limited. Uh, it, it's super cool that you can do that, that Apple has this technique to run your iOS app, do some magic, and it looks like something that, well, it, it doesn't look like it works on macOS and it looks beautifully as well. It doesn't look like a stretched out version of your iOS app. Uh, but that does mean that for the APIs that are available through Mac Catalyst, there is a limited set, right? It's mostly gear towards iOS development. And then there's some stuff that you can also do on macOS. Uh, so what Mike already found, if I'm reading this correctly, is um, that there is these cursors that you can actually um, use also then in Mac Catalyst, I would think, that he did the investigation here. Um, so there's options, it seems, from a first search engine command. Uh, maybe he used chat GTP, GPT, I don't know, who knows. Um, <laughs> but how would this work? How would the API look like? What what would this look like? Do we have like just a method to do like cursor dot set to whatever the options are here? And then you can change it in code with a method like that. Is that something that we would do? I think yeah, it will be the best option and the user can implement and change the cursor depends on some third party event, for example, on hover on over some text or entry. And uh, in that action, in that event, he can change the cursor to whatever he wants. Also, probably we should, we can change it even on iPadOS where cursor technically exists. So it's even more closer to iOS than to Mac Catalyst. So maybe we have some, mm, some API available on Mac Catalyst, but for it- And I think- How it will work on Android or Tizen. I don't know if- But I, yeah, okay. I don't know about Tizen. Um, Jay, do we have cursors on Tizen? <laughs> Yeah, we do have a cursor even on the TV, but I don't think they will provide like this kind of different types okay. of cursors and things. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so that that's there. I think for, so I think your, your common flat for um, iPadOS, uh, which is just iOS, um, that should be valid because, you know, if it's available here for the Mac Catalyst stuff, I would kind of expect mm -hmm. that it would also work on iPadOS. And I think for Android, there's at least the option to have like a cursor, right? I think I've seen that. Um, I don't know if you can actually change it, but that would be definitely be something to investigate. Maybe we can just implement this 
for all platforms, at least in some mm -hmm. shape or form, right? Um, so that would be great. As usual, just put some not supported exception because uh, yeah so that's kind of the question right like do we then want to so let's imagine that we find out that this is not well it's not supported on Tizen we know that now so what are we going to do um, for kind of like from the developer perspective I think it would be like the easiest um, but maybe also the most confusing to just have that line of code cursor set cursor to crosshair um, mm -hmm. and it doesn't do anything on Tizen but it does work on the rest of the platform. So you don't have to go and do like, if not Tizen, then change the cursor and make one line into three lines, five lines, um, and just have it do nothing and work around an exception that otherwise is thrown. On the other hand, that kind of like um, gives you maybe the um, idea that it should work on Tizen because it's not throwing me an error, um, but it's not actually showing me anything. Perhaps yeah. we can uh, utilize like the the options there because actually, if they don't want to deploy True. to Tizen, which is the only platform that doesn't support it, and something goes wrong, then maybe you do want to make sure that you're handling exceptions in that scenario. Yeah, we can also provide some uh, like uh, warnings to users that this platform is not supported, similar to what we have for uh, uh, my catalyst of when when we limit yeah, support. maybe we can even use that attribute, right? Like supported. Yeah, 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 yeah. supported. Yeah, attribute, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think we already have it for I don't know for pop up if I'm not remember if I'm not mistaken or somewhere else. I I already see that be, or for some behavior. I don't nice. remember. I like yeah, that. A couple... but we use it in in our. Yeah, because you can also use it around versioning. So like, yeah, yeah, we definitely have something in the toolkit that isn't supported in earlier versions of iOS. Mm -hmm. So you need iOS 14 or higher, and um, yeah, I'd say the. The only other way, so obviously, you know, we touched on just doing it for each platform um, or just throwing an exception or, yeah, adding the attribute. But the the one other way would be, um, you know, actually, and I, I think, yeah, Don at Maui still does this. Um, Zim Reformers definitely did it. But, yeah, like the on and then you put like on iOS dot like that platform specific um, method. Uh, I forget that's called. I don't know if anybody remember recognizes on what I'm talking about, but on platform, on platform, yeah. yeah. Um, so you can still write that in your cross-platform code. You don't have to use like if iOS, which is, yeah, I don't like <laughs> having those if steps in my code if I could avoid it. But uh, yeah, I think certainly the the supported platform attribute, so you get a warning, because because um, yeah, I agree. If I if I set the mouse cursor and I'm running my app on Tizen and the code lets me do it, then I would expect the mouse cursor to be across. If I set it to be across, and then I would probably then go to the community toolkit repo and open a bug because it wasn't working, only to then find out like, no, that's that's by design. But yeah, if we can give these some sort of warning and obviously in the docs, including the docs, um, we should be okay. And it cool. also will be like kind of Essentials, I, I suppose it's a new API for essentials because it's not like a view control. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. It goes in the in the core library. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can take a look on this API and provide some comment. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. All right, so we got that moving forward. Um, what else do we got? We got a couple of um, Brandon's corner. The um, <laughs> uh, sorry, total loss of words here. Uh, the markup uh, extensions. Um, uh, and again, I think we agreed on something that I should follow up on, and I completely did not do that. So I'm putting that next on my to do list, right? The, the element, uh, or did you figure out something in the meantime? <laughs> No, this was, yeah, this was, I just wanted to follow up with you. Um, so yeah. for anybody that missed our, our meetup or our standup last week, um, I put together this proposal to add support for, um, let's see. So there's a, the ability in .NET MAUI to use this type called relative binding source. And it's really cool because, you know, if you're, I use this all the time in collection views where you're writing code in a data template, which binds to the collection views um, input source, but 
maybe you want to bind to something in the view model that's on the same page. Um, how do you do that? Well, you do it with relative binding sources. And with relative binding sources, you can say, kind of go up the tree and look at other parents, like either other pages or other view models, other binding sources, and you can point it to something that's still in your binding tree, but it's not the direct binding. So um, I, I created this because I wanted to use <laughs> a relative binding source, um, but then found with typed bindings. So type bindings being, do I have an example down here? Oh, I didn't even, oh, there it is, usage syntax. So type bindings being these, where we actually pass in our, our view or our, our binding source. And instead of using reflection, type bindings are more performant. And yeah, I wanted to use relative binding sources with it, but then yeah, I found out it, from what I can tell, it looks like in .NET MAUI, typed bindings just don't support relative bindings. And so I think that's where we're at, uh, but yeah, if we could get a confirmation on that, Gerald, that'd be awesome. And right now I've just got this labeled as blocked until we find out more. And the other side of this conversation is this will also affect how we do or don't deprecate the old way of binding. So um, by if you ever use the C sharp markup extensions, you've probably done a binding where you say like name of, and then you point to a property in your view model. Um, Type bindings are better because they don't require reflection like the other way does. And so we were kind of chatting about like, okay, we'll probably deprecate the old way of doing it that requires reflection. That way we can nudge developers to use the more performant way. But if relative binding sources require reflection, which I'm guessing they do, and that's why they don't work with type bindings, then we'll keep the old way. <laughs> or, or maybe we'll adjust them in a way that they only work with rel relative binding sources. But that's... Future conversation, maybe later this year, we'll <laughs> yep. implement stuff like that and figure all that stuff out going forward. Yep. I think if I recall, there's something on the docs, that, the, the Maui docs that re references um, relative binding sources and them not working with compiled bindings. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you think about it, it makes sense, right? Like relative binding sources have to climb your tree hierarchy and probably they use reflection under the hood to get to the view model that your parent view is using. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll keep everybody posted though. Um, but I got a, another new one. And this is, we'll say pretty hot off the presses, but long story short, I was putting an app together and I was using absolute layout and I started using the we have existing uh, support for absolute layout in in the community toolkit dot markup library, but I started using it. And I was like, well, wait a minute, why can't I do something like setting multiple flags? So like, absolute layouts have things called absolute layout flags, and I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we had an API that allowed me to pass in params so I could pass in each flag? Um, the thought behind that for if you've never used <laughs> absolute layouts, um, they're kind of tough. Uh, let's see, usage syntax. So when, when you create your absolute layout, you can do things like pass in values like, so X proportional means that it will be proportional to the screen. So when I set my layout bounds, this first value here is the X value and it defaults to the actual pixel location. So if I didn't set this flag to be proportional and I set this to say 100, um, it would position on the X, Y coordinate plane, it would position my view on X coordinate 100 and then the Y pixel coordinate would be zero. Um, but if I set it to proportional, then I can say zero, meaning it's all the way on the left. Or if I set it to one, it would mean it's all the way to the right. Um, so I didn't want to turn this into a whole thing about absolute layouts, but um, today this is the API we have. So you can pass out these, pass in these enum flags using the bitwise or operator, which if you're already familiar with that, it works, it's great. Um, but I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could do something like this? 
So same idea, but instead of having to use the bitwise or operator, you can just say comma space and then pass in another flag. And then we'll do the bitwise or operation for you under the hood. So thought it'd be helpful to new developers who maybe, maybe you're not familiar with um, binary logic and bitwise or an XOR operations. You don't have to worry about it now because we can do that for you. And then the other API, um, I guess, okay. So <laughs> there's, there's a couple things going on here. There's new APIs. So the other new API would be this one called clear layout flags. Uh, so this just does exactly what it sounds like. Like right now we have an existing method called layout flags where you can set them. But if sometime in the future, maybe when the page disappears, you wanna change how things are laid out. Um, we don't have a way for you to do it. I mean, technically you can just say, and do I have an example here? Uh, da, da, da. no, I don't see it. Um, so technically you couldn't just pass in another new layout flag that's called absolute layout flags dot none. And that's all we're doing under the hood for clear layout flags. But, um, yeah, it was just something when I was using, I was like, wait a minute, how do I remove the layout flags? Like I see all these options to add them. What's one way to remove it? So we would introduce a new API called clear layout flags. And then Lastly, <laughs> the other idea I have in this proposal, and and to be honest with you, I'm totally open to breaking up this into multiple proposals. I included that <laughs> in the text of the proposal because I got a little carried away, got a little excited. But um, the last thing was that currently this dot layout flags method that we have, if you call it twice, it'll override the previous one. So if I say label layout flags, size size proportional and then layout flags position proportional well the way our functionality works today is this overwrites the previous one so at when once all these are done the only layout flag would be position proportion position proportional and i kind of thought to myself i was like well layout flags kind of work together um so this is something where you're probably going to set multiple and so the updated functionality I was proposing here would be just to combine them. So if you say dot layout flag size proportional, then dot layout flags position proportional, they would be combined together. We would do that bitwise or operation under the hood for you. Um, and then if you wanted to later, you could always use clear layout flags to zero them out and go back. But uh, the, the downside of this one that I want to highlight is Every other extension method that we have in this entire library overwrites. So for example, like if I say new label dot text color and I say colors dot green, and then in the same, I say for the same label, I say dot text color again and say colors dot pink, the pink is going to override the green. Um, so I think this does make sense for this one instance uh, where where we have enum flags and flags are commonly combined. Um, but my one concern with this updated functionality is that it will be different than every other <laughs> functionality in the library. So I um, want to run this by you guys. If, if we think it will be confusing, then obviously we can go forward without updating the functionality and we can just add the new APIs. Or if we think it makes sense because it's an enum, it's a flag enum, and we kind of carve out this exception for uh, instead of overwriting, we augment and add two. Then we can push forward with it. But this is the first time I've brought this up to anybody. So what do you guys think? <laughs> As an extension to the the later, the last change you mentioned with being able to chain the method calls. Would it be weird to have a, a almost a, like a default parameter on the end to actually make it clear that we probably can't with params, can you? Um, that it is, you could choose whether you want to overwrite or whether you want to um, clear it. But actually, I don't know. Well, if it, you'd have to, can you do it with params? I don't know if you can. Interesting. Um... That's a good question. And I actually really like that because then, yeah, we'd have that default parameter that says like, should combine 
or I don't know, maybe I'll think about it because you could go negative and say like, should overwrite existing flags. And maybe that one makes the most sense. Um, I mean, you could actually have, could it, call it clear layout flags. So it ties in with the clear layout flags method as well. A bit of consistent. Oh yeah. Should clear layout flags. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that would make a lot of sense. And then you'd see it in the API and in your IntelliSense and it should you think then, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should just at least, you know, flip that, that light bulb out and go, okay, no, actually, yeah, we do, we do want to combine them. Um, but yeah, like I said, my, my only concern is this will be the only method that augments from augments the previous value instead of overriding the previous value. And is that a big deal or is it just a coincidence that every method so far hasn't needed it? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I guess tip by, by convention, all of the extension methods, but the majority of the extension methods just set the property with the same name as the method. Um, which I understand may give unexpected results in this scenario, but then does it lend a better question to should we ever let people chain the same method more, more than once? <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe what I'll do, and maybe probably what I should have done before getting all excited with this proposal, um, <laughs> why don't I break this one out? I'll, I'll remove number two from here. And we'll just move forward with adding these new APIs for this specific proposal because, well, two thoughts. Um, this is more of a philosophical <laughs> debate than anything else. Like, obviously, the extension methods work fine and that's not a big deal. But, um, you know, the philosophy of do we want to overwrite or, or augment? Um, but also, absolute layout's probably the least used layout. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time debating stuff like this. Like if, if we just sit decline updating the functionality, I think that's totally valid, but you know, grid is grid and stack layouts are definitely the most used and absolute layout. I don't know if there's any metrics on this, but I would guess probably 1%, maybe less than 5% of layouts are absolute layouts. So I don't want, I don't want to spend too much of our, of our precious time trying to reinvent the wheel on absolute layouts because of that. So, okay, cool. I'll do that. I'll, I'll break this out and then maybe we can get a vote going on the new APIs once I've updated the proposal, but no need to do it later. Cause I, I see we're already over time. Yeah. Sounds perfect. Kind of on time over time. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think this is the last thing that we wanted to talk about. So this is a, uh, uh, a wrap up. George says, backlock it, time is precious, pick your battles. Absolutely true. Um, yeah, time time is a constant. The only thing that we're juggling is kind of like the priorities, right? That's the, the thing that we are doing all the time, uh, which is hard sometimes, but oh well, someone has to do it. Um, I think we got a lot of good stuff here. Um, went over a lot of good stuff. I learned how to install Tizen. I'm going to try again tomorrow, uh, update that extension with Winget. I don't know if I could do that. Um, and then all the other stuff. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank you so much, friends, here on stream. Sean, Vlad, Brandon, Jay. Uh, Jay, enjoy your day. I didn't forget. Yes, enjoy your day with the family, the day off. Um, and we'll see you again next month, June already. Um, actually, really, really quick question. Are we, how did we do this last time? Are we doing this for a year already? Um, I imagine people may be having some time off around the summertime at this part of the world we'll figure that out and we'll let you know on our twitter account so make sure that you follow us on the handles that are available um except for vlad and we'll see you next month <laughs> <laughs> talk about it